Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. We talk about <laughs> horror movies on this show, and coming on this episode, we are talking about a new horror film. It's called Down a Dark Hall, starring mm-hmm. Emma Thurman, which is... Oh. Yeah, there's like a star in this one. I'm, <laughs> I'm so used to us doing movies where there may be like a star in like a horror movie way, we're like unknown mm-hmm. for horror movies, but how often yeah. do we do a movie where a proper actor who's known for other things is in it? Yeah. Yeah, she's slumming it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> not sure what's going on, but hey, it's always a joy to, to see Uma. We love Uma on this podcast. We're we're all big fans. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big <laughs> Kill Bill fan. You, you often yeah, see you me brand, uh, wearing a Kill Bill shirt, so yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, I do. I, I sometimes wear a Kill Bill shirt on the podcast, Tim. That's a thing. It's a thing that happens. Okay. All right, you say so. <laughs> Am I going to have to actually show you the shirt? Next time I'm wearing it, I'm going to have to show, like, actually show you it just to make sure it ingrains into your brain. Anyway, we talk about the horror movie and we maybe argue it occasionally because uh, Tim says something stupid, I react to the stupid thing, and then it goes in circles for about 10 minutes and then we mm-hmm. we calm down. That's that's the, that's, that's the method to the madness. That's a, that, yeah. <laughs> it's a format. It's a format. It works for us. Anyway, yeah. so we'll start the, we'll start the spoiler free. We'll, we'll talk about it it's completely free of spoilers and then about halfway through we'll give you a warning and we'll go into full spoilers then so that's what we do for these movies uh, and yeah so hey uh so yeah so what is what is down a dark hall uh this is a movie i, I remember doing the trailer me and connor did the trailer for this on 121 trailer talk that we do every week we did this you know maybe two months whenever the trailer came out two months ago and it's a horror movie set in a, a private boarding school for delinquent girls but they're they're selected you know there's only six that are there for this semester and mm-hmm. i'm going to sneeze one second <laughs> apologies so the six girls who are taken to this boarding school <laughs> run by uma thurman who's doing this ridiculous european accent this german <laughs> accent and they're, they're all there they're all troubled girls like the main one that we know whose name is kit mm-hmm. which is short for uh catherine uh she is there she should be to see her at the start of the movie she's in therapy because she tried to burn down the school which actually reminds me a lot of the hit television show buffy the vampire slayer uh buffy was accused of trying to burn down the school uh that's br- that's brought up a couple of times early season one <laughs> We can move on now. Uh, so, yeah, so she's there with all these other girls. There's one in particular didn't fight. Uh, Taylor Russell, I recognise, is one of the girls. She was in Lost in Space the earlier this year on Netflix. Uh, and I liked her in that, and she's fine in this. But, uh, but yeah, so that, and that's the, and obviously spooky <laughs> things start happening. Uh, scary things, possibly down the end of halls, because that's the title of the movie. And then, yeah, so we'll leave it there. We'll go into more plot and spoilers, mm-hmm. but we'll leave it there for now. Mm-hmm. So... I'll ask the question, Tim, mm-hmm. did you enjoy Down a Dark Hall? <sighs> uh, not really. It's the, the thing is, it's not like offensively bad or anything. It's just like, man, it, it's real middle of the road. Like, I, I think for maybe like the first 30, 40 ish minutes, like, I, I wouldn't say I was crazy about it, but I was like, all right, I'm kind of interested to see where this is going and what's going to happen. And then it just gets into, you know, just pretty much every blatant horror cliche, you know, that you can think of. Like, it's there's nothing original or unique about this. It looks like every, you know, VOD horror movie that you haven't heard of until, like, you know, two weeks ago or something. It's like, yeah, just everything about it is just very bland. And it's, you know, it, it's not the worst watch in the world, but... Yeah, there's definitely nothing about it that really like stands out, or you know, is that great? <laughs> Do you think it helps that you watch this? The last film you watched for this show was Halloween Two by Rob Zombie. <laughs> Do you think that helps this in a positive way? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> after that, like anything you know, we watch is gonna you know have yeah. that slight little now, ding. <laughs> if you're watching this the week this review goes out, we're going. Wait a minute, there was no Halloween Two review. What's happening? What are you talking about? <laughs> October yeah, baby. Step- yeah, step back from that ledge. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't end it yet. Just it's, it's coming. coming. <laughs> it's coming in October. We've been stacking episodes for October, and yes, Rob Zombies. And the reason why I'm not hiding that one is because we said last year we'd do them this year. So, Rob Zombies Halloween one and two are coming in October. So look forward to that. <laughs> but uh, so 
Yeah, I actually agree with you to a scary degree because <laughs> cause the movie starts, right? And there's mm-hmm. a, kind of, a dream sequence with uh, Kit's a little girl and she sees her dead dad who's like a That's ghost. Right. And I was like, oh God, I'm going to hate this movie. This is like every... <laughs> do you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the mid-2000s. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of things like oh, Darkness like... Falls. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. You know, it had that kind of like okay, we've got this idea for a ghost story, but it's really just going to be this really cliched thing without any atmosphere, without mm-hmm. any actual scares, without any actual charm mm-hmm. or, or whatever, right? Yeah. But I kind of perked up a little bit, just not because the plot was good. In fact, the worst thing about this movie is by far the plot. What the, It gets worse as it goes because the plot is thoroughly uninteresting and cliched. I, I think there's like maybe one interesting aspect about it, which we'll get to in the spoilers, but it, it's like... It's definitely not enough to... I, I think maybe, like, once you kind of find out what's going on and what it's about, I was like, okay, that's, I, like, an idea I haven't seen before. But everything surrounding up to it as to, you know, how they go about presenting it, how they find out about it, you know, like... Uh, Feels generic. Yeah, you know, yeah, everything about that is, like, generic. So it's like... I, I don't know. I would say maybe there's, like, a slight little bit of, like, oh, this is kind of unique, surrounded by, like just the most bland generic ways of uh going about it the one thing you liked i'm going to just take a guess right now we'll find out in spoilers if i'm right mm-hmm. i'm going to guess the ostrich now moving on so <laughs> okay i'm right i can tell i'm right it's the, it's the ostrich <laughs> the big ostrich scene i know that's the one you love all right so <laughs> i shall say nothing <laughs> so so yeah now i paired up because <laughs> It cuts then to, to Kit as, you know, a teenage girl and she's in the mm-hmm. therapy, or she's actually with the principal and the therapist is kind of sitting at the side and her, her, her mum's there, mm-hmm. her stepdad's there. Um, and she's been like, she's like sarcastically saying everything she's supposed to say. Like she's mm-hmm. saying, oh, I've learned from my mistakes, I want to be better. But the whole thing has this tinge of, I'm bullshitting you. And mm-hmm. it wasn't like perfect, but it was like, okay, she's got a bit of an attitude, a bit of a character. I can mm-hmm. kind of... She, I think the actress isn't bad, is what I'm saying. I feel like yeah. I can see the the you know the the typical bad actress in this role just hamming this up or mm-hmm. trying to be like emotional or serious and just failing miserably. She mm-hmm. does an okay job. It's not the greatest dialogue in the world. The character is definitely cliched, but she does okay. Yeah. Um. Honestly, the big thing that turned me around in the first ten minutes was the stepdad, who I thought was a hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... oh, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say because they're sitting at the dinner table afterwards and. She's doing all, there's all these cliched moments of, like, you know, the, the teenage daughter not liking the stepdad, right? And mm-hmm. you, you go one or two ways with this. He's either, like, a really quiet guy who seems nice enough, but he doesn't want to interfere, or he's the asshole stepdad, right? He's the asshole mm-hmm. who oversteps his bounds, maybe abusive, whatever. And not only is he a nice guy, he does actually, he cracks some good jokes. Like, you know, her mum at one point says, hey, you call him you know, and she's going to say dad, which by the way, it's so weird to say a teenager to call someone new dad. Like, I feel like it makes sense when you're like under 10, but it's weird when you're yeah. like already 17 or whatever. And mm-hmm. she's like, no, I'm going to call him Dave. And then he cuts in, actually, I prefer David. And I thought that was really <laughs> funny. Like, yeah. he's kind of rolling with it. He's being nice to her. He's, he's being friendly as he can. Mm-hmm. And the one, the, the, the few, I mean, he's not in a, a lot of the movie, of course, because once they drop her off to <laughs> the school, you know, the parents are gone. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to break it to you, but if that's your favorite part of the movie, then you're, you know, not, you're in for kind of a rough uh, time. No, but it kind of, <laughs> like, I kind of liked him. I thought it was a nice, refreshing, mm-hmm. sort of realistic, nice person who was the stepdad. And even the way that when they drop her off, he just says, hey, if anything weird happens or uh, something's not right, call us. And it felt genuine. It felt like, no, he genuinely yeah. cares. He's a nice enough guy and he's not a cliche. And I was like, okay, maybe the characters in this won't annoy me. Because I feel like one of the things that always happens in these shitty uh, low-budget mm-hmm. horror movies from the past, like, mm-hmm. you know, 10, 20 years is that I tend mm-hmm. to always hate the characters. Mm-hmm. And I do think the bully girl, uh, Veronica, is a bit... She- Effie. she's way too over the top yeah. like uh like everyone else actually feels kind of like a, a real person uh the only thing i think that's kind of weird is none of them seem that bad like yeah, e- that... even the main character it's like wait why are they at the school that, that's uh, the, that, that's the problem with it is that they all feel like decent enough people that i don't understand why they've all been shipped off to this yeah. school as if they're all like ultra delinquents um, except for the main bully girl who is yeah just way over the top like yeah she... yeah she it's, it's yeah. like they didn't know how to rate her subtly and she's just trying to like set other girls hairs on fire and that's like part of her character yeah. uh and she's like uh, you know aggressive the minute she steps at the scene but like so uh, 
I, I'm kind of actually curious if um, I don't know if this was based on a book or if they're trying to go after like the you know YA crowd or something because this kind of felt like you know something along those lines like you know kind of Hunger Games ask or like uh, what was that um, that crappy timber movie like from a year ago or something that looked like an x-men ripoff like this oh, kind of felt like yeah. a young adult the, book, you know the the house of madame something yeah is it some uh, of that something stupid yeah. but uh, I, I definitely got like a lot of like young adult vibes uh off this I, i'd say probably a little bit more than like horror vibes yeah that's fair i, I think one of the things that i was feeling is that it does definitely it is it's definitely a horror movie because it, it does start doing oh, yeah, oh, there's yeah. something creepy at the end of the hall the music starts going and <laughs> they're starting to be concerned about what's going on and there's like you know implications all over the place um i will say though it did, it did feel like a, a very light horror movie like i, I didn't feel like it was a full-blown we're trying to be a terrifying movie mm -hmm. it was more about the revelation of the mystery of what was going on and yeah and that, that's the big problem is like okay once the girls got together four out of five of them were were reasonable enough they weren't exactly yeah. like the most lovable characters ever but they mm -hmm. were better than i expect from these types of movies you you didn't mind spending time with them yeah like it wasn't like yeah you're like oh, okay like I, i'm all right with yeah. <laughs> they get introduced to the various teachers and the various teachers seem you know diverse enough and you're kind of like <laughs> all right they've all got the hots for the younger music teacher okay that's kind of funny in fact the one <laughs> the one time the uh the billy made me laugh was uh after he plays piano in front of them all and it's very like hypnotic and sexual <laughs> the billy just like yells out you know right in front of him yeah i'd do him <laughs> just do him very bluntly yeah. and it like I'm like, okay that was kind of funny um <laughs> so yeah the first half while not particularly good and I didn't necessarily feel like I feel like it was promising or it was going to get like really amazing in the second half, but yeah, I didn't mind it. I was like, you know what, this yeah. isn't as bad as I was expecting. Sure. Um, yeah. And I would never say it gets terrible. It just gets really generic and boring in the second half. Exactly. I, I just don't care about the plot. The the plot is just, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's it's everything I don't like about mid two thousand supernatural movies, <laughs> and it really reminded me of the movies of that 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 era specifically. Yeah, it, was, it felt like they had like a checklist of pretty much every you know PG thirteen horror movie cliche mm -hmm. you know that they needed to run down, and it's like, and and again like, you know the, I don't think the plot is like the worst thing ever. That if you know there probably could have been interesting things they did with it, but uh, just the way they go about with how the characters are making the discoveries and you know like when they're timing like you have the jump scares and you know uh and, and like that kind of thing just every every way that the scares and whatever are portrayed is just it's so boring seen it before yeah and i think the big the biggest uh missed opportunity with this if you didn't change anything else i feel like what you really had to do is there's a point where they get so scared that they just sort of even though they still kind of all like, don't really like each other that much they kind of mm -hmm. just say slumber party just so they're all together because they're scared yeah and i felt mm -hmm. like at that point okay so they're going to like bond and they're going to become a team and try to fight mm -hmm. back but unfortunately that never really happens they're still kind of yeah. just separate and we kind of almost forget the rest of the girls and just focus on kit and i thought that was a missed mm -hmm. opportunity i felt like that that is where the movie could have shined was the, the bond between them and like learning to fight back or whatever and yeah you know and then and like especially like i kind of found you know some of the other students like a little bit more interesting um especially like when they kind of start to you know develop the their skills and stuff and kind of you know are, are going off on, on their own little things like oh i kind of want to check in with this person and see you know what's happening to to them right yeah. now at this point i, I really don't some, get that i've got some theories on oh i've got some ideas of how they could have made this better but it's just, just full spoiler talk because we need, we need <laughs> no. to talk about where the plot right. was with them but we'll uh, play movie doctor and try to <laughs> fix this oh absolutely absolutely I'll, we'll play movie doctor don't you worry uh <laughs> so yeah that, i mean that's the big point and then the ending's just this cliched kind of like overly sweet kind of mm -hmm. ending and it's just kind of like uh and it's the sad part is is that right from the opening scene i i guess more or less what was going to happen at the end oh sure yeah <laughs> you know like i, I guessed all right you know I wonder I if he... this is going, you know, I don't want to spoil it. Like, okay, you know what? Full spoilers from this point on, full spoilers for Down okay. a Dark Hall. <laughs> You've got the spoiler free version. So, the opening scene, we, the little girl <laughs> sees, you know, dead dad ghost. And I'm like, I wonder if the ghost of her dead dad will help her at the end of the film. Ooh, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder indeed. And sure enough, he does, he kind of gives her a pep talk and he gets, she gets to talk to him one last time. 
and she's like on the 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 ambulance and she's dying and she wakes up and that's the end of the movie and a very cheesy kind of pop song starts playing as the title comes up which <laughs> usually is a, a sign like if you t- if you played that song and said that's the music that's going to play when it cuts to the credits i'd be like yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, i'm not gonna like this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i can tell that's fine and the, the thing is like even if you like didn't actively predict that that was gonna happen i don't think anyone would be surprised mm. you know that that that's where it goes absolutely it's uh it's, it's, it's the most obvious thing they could have done and i get that you're setting up at the start and then paying it off but it's so telegraphed that it just it feels it feels pointless and it does feel cliched and cheesy and it feels yeah. like you know so many other movies of this type to do that yeah, let's um, check out dead dad ghost that's so <laughs> everyone knows about that so the main kind of plot that happens outside of a couple of spooky like oh there's a ghost or something kicking about is mm-hmm. that each of the girls start becoming very good at one subject uh kept mm-hmm. becomes very good uh, at piano right in, in music mm-hmm. class and uh one girl becomes like this genius mathematician even though she didn't pass algebra before she got here and mm-hmm. one girl becomes this great poet even though she you know never done that before and another girl becomes this this great uh artist you know you know doing mm-hmm. paintings and whatnot and so very quickly it's like okay so there's like ghostly presence he's making them better at this right like and then the, the overall plot is the big reveal is that uh uma thurman's character and her you know band of teachers are using these girls because the reason why they picked these girls specifically is because they're all documented to have some kind of encounter or claim to have had an encounter with some kind of ghost or afterlife presence of some kind so they're using them as conduits to because one of the things that someone says early on is like Oh, that's great composer. I mean, he died when he was thirty. See, imagine what he could have done if he was still around, or if he lived to you know a good age. So they're using the girls in like you know playing piano through them and doing all that kind of thing. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's an interesting enough idea. Yeah. And then, I, like, a, oh, go. yeah, no, you go, you go. Well, uh, yeah, like at some at some point they say like, oh, uh, you know, like you girls, like you're their instruments now. They're basically like you know mm. playing through you and. Uh, and I think that's kind of like a, that, maybe not the best idea in the world, but I do think that is an interesting, unique idea. Like, I think it's an interesting idea for a different genre. I don't think it's the best idea okay. for a horror movie. Yeah. It, it, it's also like kind of weird to think like, all right, so like are all like the most famous ghosts, like are they all just like kind of hanging around here? Like, <laughs> and there's like one spot, like how exactly are they? It's uh, uh, you know, a like good question, Toby. It's a good question. But my big complaint with this, obviously there's the, the thing where like Kit's the one who does the investigating and again it's the very cliched sort of sequence where she's going around and looking up books and she's like investigating. Was, yeah. you know, it's what, that scene. I was laughing at this scene because again this is just one of those things where I was like man do we have to have this in like every one of these shitty you yeah. know mid 2000s kind of horror movie where it's like you know all right if, if we just see her like reading a book or something like we'll get the gist like we don't have to see like the fast cuts between like her just constantly like flipping pages through the books, like looking up at a painting, and then looking down and looking up. One of one of the things that uh, uh made me like laugh the most is um you have the one artist that keeps painting, and she's every time she paints, she puts the initials C T on the painting, and then like I uh, believe it was T C. No, that's a big difference. But T C. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so then like when she's doing the research or whatever, and like she's like looking up at this um like these paintings in this book, and like you know she sees one with the same initials, and she kind of like looks at that and then like looks at the painter then looks at that then like it's like a flashback to like the other painting and it's like it goes on for so long it's like we get it they're the same painter like all right like give us some credit for god's sake it, it felt like it went forever yeah it could have literally just cut to the final bit where she's looking at that page the relevant yeah. page that she eventually gets to and that would have been enough I especially think uh, even before she started the research i think we already kind of put it together like oh yeah uh, all right, uh, those aren't your initials so it's, it's actually very easy early on to kind of predict what's happening as soon as they start doing all these things where they shouldn't be able to do it especially mm-hmm. since the girl who's doing the uh the poetry is like oh they, she comes and talks to me in my head she comes and talks to me it's like okay so, so we understand what we're doing here here's, here's my yeah. problem with this i i think there's potential even in a horror movie even though i think it's better suited mm-hmm. idea to something else i do think that there's potential here in the sense that what if because one of the things they find out, or that Kit finds out when she listens to the records, is that a lot of the girls who have came here eventually committed suicide. Mm-hmm. And because of the, the stress of going through all this and like taking in these like personas, 
Um, and I don't know if they were kind of implying that because some of them, some of the artists or whatever, also committed suicide, that that kind of get passed on yeah. to them in a in a weird Possibly. way, yeah. you know. Um, but my thing was like, so they all they all stay pretty separate. You know, Kick is around trying to get them, and they're kind of dead or dying or committing suicide at one point. And I mm-hmm. couldn't help, and obviously the one, the only one who survives actually is the bully, other than Kit at the end. But mm-hmm. I couldn't help but feel like a, I want them to team up, but b, I'm yeah. also like. What if they like use these like newfound like oh there you abilities go yes yeah. to 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 achieve something like what if they use that to fight back like what if instead of forgetting everything immediately after they've been possessed what if one of them was actually now a math genius what if one of them was now actually like an expert in in, oh, yeah. in poetry and what if they could use that in some way against the teachers to fight back I don't know like I'm thinking of ways to make the movie interesting like do something with the plot. <laughs> Well, that that's like you know that kind of feels like almost like an X Men thing. Like you know you oh, have yeah. these you know like young teenagers that are that go to this school in the middle of nowhere and start to discover they have powers. But then you know yeah you kind of want to see them actually use that to their advantage. And then if they you know turn that around and fight back, then great. Yeah, that'd be much more interesting. Instead, they're kind of like you know first of all the bully doesn't is the only one that doesn't really have any you know uh, gifts or anything going through her. And then Kit like she does but then it also seems like you know she has kind of a clear enough head to like not really let it get to her that yeah, much yeah she's she's the chosen one cuz Uma Thurman even says at the end oh we can't stop now even though there's more dying because mm-hmm. she she's like the closest we've ever gotten to achieving our goals and she's got this like what? uh lieutenant who's like, the, the discipline t- you know so yeah character. so so what exactly is their goal is it just to kind of create these new works of art or is it to like talk to the dead because didn't the lieutenant want to she wanted to be reunited with like her son or whatever yeah she, she had a specific goal of wanting to be reunited with her dead son um uma thurman though and the rest of them see, it seemed to be just to achieve yes like advancements in all of these fields and they all had like a stake in that yeah it, it feels kind of weird like it feels like all the, you know, quote-unquote bad guys or whatever, they're not really on, like, the same page. Because, like, yeah, you know, the son ends up rebelling from the mom. The psychiatrist doesn't really seem like... Yeah, well, once you know, people start dying, she's like, hey, I don't actually... I'm not really... Well, she's not a psychiatrist, actually. She, she claims to be a psychiatrist, but she's actually just a... Uh, uh, I don't even remember. <laughs> no, she's, she's the, she's the, uh, like the, the, the English teacher. She's the, she's the literature. Oh, she well, yeah, she's, like, working at the because, school. Because they yeah. say at the start, this, this, she says, like... Uh, I thought you were a doctor. She's like, no, I, I've got a doctorate in literature. <laughs> oh, got a PhD. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that was the latest start. I, uh, yeah, I think I think we just mistakenly called her psychiatrist at the start because yeah. that, that just made sense from the opening scene. But she's not. Yeah. But she's yeah. She turns over a new leaf. Um, I actually have to bet there was a couple of times in the movie where I did laugh really unintentionally. You know, like the movie like, unintentionally made me laugh. One was actually the death of the son, the music <laughs> teacher, because the music teacher's Uma Thurman's son. Uh, who's you know in his early twenties, and you know, and at one point he actually um, kisses uh, Kit. Yeah, and... I was not okay with that. <laughs> yeah, it was it was funny because like they set up they're all attracted to him, and it's like okay, <laughs> they've, all, they've all got a crush on the teacher, no big deal. Uh, but then like h- him and her have this really quiet moment at the piano, and she goes in for a kiss, and I'm like, oh come on, she's like sixteen, seventeen. What would they yeah, do? like. Even before that, you know, he's doing the thing where he's going behind her back and like playing piano with her, and it's all very, you know, you know, sexual tensiony it's kind of stuff. Very intimate, and, yeah. It's very, very yeah. intimate for and, what you would be doing with a student. Yeah, um, and like, and you, and you are led to believe that he is like, you know, uh, a younger person, but still, he has to be like at least in his twenties or something. And yeah, like you said, she's got to be at least sixteen. So I'm like, uh, yeah, this is not. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, just, it, it's not needed. I think what gets me about it though is that it's not played like that it's, it's played completely as we're supposed to be almost like hoping for the romance oh, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to blossom <laughs> yeah. but we're worried that he's got a dark secret and that's what we're Listen, supposed to be concerned about you know if you're gonna do that you just throw in a line somewhere to be like yeah you know um when i went to cambridge they couldn't believe that i was the first 16 year old to graduate or something <laughs> like that like just say something stupid like that so we can get get on board with it but <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I think it's funny. I feel like in the nineties, like they got away with the, the 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 younger, like older person and the student, like oh, yeah. having a, a a romance all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, even one of my favorite things, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, she's dating <laughs> a two hundred and forty year old vampire, which I think mm-hmm. in and of itself is supposed to be poking fun at that trope. Is that he's that old? You know, like that's the joke. Oh. He's you know he's like yeah. ancient, <laughs> but 
you know, but nowadays I feel like we're a bit more conscious of it. We're a bit more, you know, Riverdale tried to pull this shit like last year, and everyone just kind of like, no, we're not cool with this anymore. Yeah. Uh, as a society, we're not we're not cool with it. But mm-hmm. but it kind of just gets dropped after that. Outside of the fact that he wants to try and help her at the end, he feels guilty <laughs> about you know her being victimized, and he has the most hilarious death because like by the end of the movie, like they've set the building on fire, mm-hmm. and she's called the cops, and obviously Emma Thurman and Co aren't very happy about this, and basically some of the ceiling just drops on his head but the effect looks really bad and like funny because yeah. he's just kind of like standing there still as it lands on him it's really weird but it, <laughs> made, it made me laugh i thought it was really funny uh there was a yeah. couple of funny moments i can't remember what the other one was though there was one before that that really made me laugh and i can't quite remember it hopefully it comes back to me before the end of this but and of course i, I think you're referring to not not intentionally funny not intentionally but... funny no there was, another, there was another unintentional uh yeah. moment where it was supposed to be like a, a scary thing or I've got, I feel like it was someone hitting someone else, but it being like really over the top. Uh, possibly. Uh, that does remind me that um, you know, another you know, uh, cliche that you see in all these these movies is just really bad CGI. Like, oh sure, yeah. You know, the, there's a couple instances like there's one like really dumb jump scare where you know I think she just turns and there's like a ghost screaming in her face where it's like yeah. Oh, like, do we really have to do this? Like, this is so cheap and it looks and bad. They and... never really like explain because like most of the ghosts are just like normal people because they're like these artists and like professors and stuff. <laughs> but there's this there's this one bald guy who's like really creepy. And once they're openly talking about the fact that there's ghosts walking around, like Uma Thurman mm-hmm. mentions something like, "Oh yes, yeah, so they're not all friendly." And there's never like any kind of like, "Why is he around? Why is he here? Oh, Who is he?" That- like that's that's one of the things that really annoy me about it is it seems like there's so much different stuff going on like all right yeah you have these you know great artists that are working through these girls but then you also have you know this person wants to talk to the dead so she'd be reunited with her son and then it looks like they also want her to play music for the ghosts like they want to throw the ghosts like a party or yeah, something like that, honestly that was the scene, doing? that was the scene i hated the most in the movie is where she goes into like a trance and plays piano <laughs> And then it's like she sees all the dead people having a ball around her and like Uma Thurman and that are there and they're like delighted looking around as if they can see them as well, which I'm not even sure if they could. It seemed like they could, but it's hard to tell. But yeah, it's like, what are you doing? Like either there's a specific goal where these ghosts want to create works of art or, you know, there's this thing where these ghosts just, I guess, want to be alive or be entertained or something like... I feel like the correct movie to do this premise in is not a horror movie. I feel the correct movie to do this in is a touching kind of quirky drama where Mm -hmm. like a young woman is possessed by like a dead pianist a dead musician right to compose more stuff but it's more of like a friendly thing that she becomes comfortable with and she lets him do it and then there's like a sad moment at the end where she like realizes that because he's finished his grand masterpiece that he has to leave now like Mm -hmm. i can see like a sad kind of like almost like kind of weird romance with a ghost like i'm getting (laughs) like that's kind of what i can see in my head for for this premise yeah, I could see that. Um, I, again, I kind of keep going back to like the the YA angle. Like to me, it feels like, mm. all right, this is your your new kind of Hunger Games thing. Like, yeah, just have it be a little more open. Like, oh hey, you're gifted. Come to this gifted school where you know you'll talk to the dead and stuff. But yeah, make it a little less horry and maybe just a little more, you know, quirky and give them like a goal to try to you know achieve. And I feel like, I feel like ha- shoehorning this into a horror movie, just brings a lot of cliches because it doesn't feel like the, okay. the premise is best suited there i feel like if you put this in a take the core idea of like you know dead artists and you know philosophers mm-hmm. and whatever channeling through like young people whether it be teenagers or older people or whatever like that as an idea is okay but i feel like, like i yeah, feel like well, the tone has to be completely different i feel like you have to do something quirky with that or do something touching with that and instead it's just a bunch of cliched scares and then she <laughs> talks to her dead dad at the end, and it's like, okay, yeah, we've never seen this before. Yawn. Yeah. Aw, I'm dead. Or maybe, yeah, or, or maybe if you do want to keep it more horror-like, maybe kind of strip it down. Like, you know, instead of a school, just have it be like a family moving into a new house where there was an artist that died there, and they just possess, you know, one person, but then the ghost actually ends up being, you know, evil and mean, and it's a dark presence or, or something like that, I think is a little more suited as to... Yeah, just being like, oh, no, these, you know, five different great artists are you oh, know, even, working through you, these you five. Could even, no, you could even keep the idea of, like, bad ghosts and good ghosts and mm-hmm. have the person, like, become friendly with the good ghost that possesses her to, like, do whatever it is, you know, 
you know, music, art, whatever. And then, like, a demonic spirit shows up, a la Insidious or The Conjuring or something like that. And mm-hmm. she actually has an ally. She has someone helping her Oh, fight. yeah, there you go. Um, oh. <laughs> but again, oh. more pared down. Unless, like, don't have it be your dad or anything too close to her like that. It's just ultra cheesy. Or, like, <laughs> what about, like, a like a comedy where, uh, like, a student is failing all their classes so like they you know use a ouija board Wait, to like oh, contact actually, like... so basically what you're saying is bill and ted but instead of going through time it's ghosts yeah. <laughs> coming into them to help them with various subjects basically yeah <laughs> yeah i know i can see that working like i feel like this this fits a lot of different things um i think for a horror movie ghost threat. <laughs> yeah i think for a horror movie there's just too much going on although yeah. it could have maybe worked if the the plans were more sinister because outside of the fact that the girls may end up dying it wasn't actually mm-hmm. that much of a direct like you know, we have, like, nefarious plans for you. And then on oh, top yeah. of that, because if, if they did that, if they had, like, more nefarious plans that were more clearly evil mm-hmm. and coming after them, then you ha- have the other idea of the girls actually team up and become a unit and actually mm-hmm. learn to grow up because they have to fight back. There's your, there's not only your, your fun, like, uh, proactive main characters, but it's also mm-hmm. um, your arc. It's, you're, you mm-hmm. know, there are a bunch of losers who, who don't want to interact with each other but over the course of the film, because they have to team up, they mature yeah. because of that through those actions. Like, that yeah. could be a good movie. That could work. Yeah, that definitely sounds more interesting. And then, again, yeah, I do think it's important to maybe get the villains more on the same page or something, because I, I just forgot there's the um, there's the male uh, teacher as well. And yeah, then the math, it's... Math guy, yeah. Yeah, and it, it seemed like his thing was that he wanted the formula, but then he was going to take credit for it. So it's like, all right, so... You have like one guy that wants this so he can take credit for it. Then you got one person that just wants to talk to the dead son. Then you got the headmistress. I'm not really exactly sure what her ultimate goal is. And then you got like two other people that, you know, end up siding with the good guy. So it's like ugh, these these villains are all over the place. They need a, a more unified unit. I mean, I think you can get away with them all having different motives if you spend time developing them all. But the movie doesn't oh, do yeah. that. The movie just kind of, you know, you get these things very quickly. Listen, um, you get Uma for three days, you know, you get, be happy with what you get. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably some truth in that. I mean, I could, I, maybe not three days, but I feel like, yeah, she probably, they probably had her for a week and then mm-hmm. they had the rest of the cast for the rest of the time and <laughs> did the, the rest of the movie. And it, yeah, I mean, it's not the worst thing ever. Like I say, it's not the most offensive oh, or right, bad thing yeah. uh, or anything like that. This is not down there with, this, this is not truth or dare bad. Yeah, like, like in the end, like, obviously we're saying it like, doesn't even negative. matter. Yeah, like, you know, we're saying a lot of negative things, but it's still watchable. Like, I don't think there was any point where it's like, I can't take this, I gotta shut it off, you know? It's like, you know, it's a pretty easy, what, 90-ish minutes, you know, it it goes by fast, and, you know, the the characters are likable enough that it's like, all right, well, it's not, like, horrendous, or, you know, I don't want to rip out my eyes having to watch them, you know, do their thing. It got more tedious as it went on because the plot became this generic, just mishmash of ideas where nothing kind of clicked together. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't believe when the movie was ending. I was, I felt like we didn't really get like a story. I felt like it was just kind of wrapping up all of a sudden. No, and honestly, even like the even the title doesn't really fit the movie. I feel like because no, it it's doesn't. not like that. No. Like I like what well, there was one room or whatever. They were like, oh, don't go down there. But it's not like every night they heard something from there and they looked down. And yeah, that, that, that's just where the the records were kept for for yeah. the past girls. That's all that was in there, and. Yeah, even the trailer doesn't really match them because because I I thought going into this that it was going to be more of a typical oh the school's haunted and there's a creepy ghost mm-hmm. and they're going to be like dealing with that. I I had no idea it was going to be this you know them all getting channeling like dead people through them and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the trailer you know kind of made it look worse than it is, but at the same no, I don't really like this anyway. But like it made it look more of a generic haunted mm-hmm. you know school movie or whatever, but. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 not it's not good. I wouldn't recommend watching it. It's it's, it's extremely <laughs> forgettable and bland. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's not the worst thing ever. Like I, I feel like sure. there's a mostly, I mean it's not everyone, but I feel like there's a good portion of the cast which are actually pretty decent actors. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's just the scripts just dull and uninteresting, and mm-hmm. the movie feels pretty pretty generic. Um, this comes from mm-hmm. the same director, by the way, as Buried, the uh, the Ryan Reynolds movie and the Coffin. Oh, okay. All right. Which was better? I would say that was a, that's a better movie. Hmm. So maybe, uh, maybe he he hasn't really gotten used to having multiple sets yet. <laughs> he also did a movie called Red Lights with Robert De Niro, like a few years after that, and I, I never saw that. But nope, <laughs> never yeah. heard of it. 
I remember seeing the trailer. I used to trailer used to mm-hmm. play all the time when I was in the theater. But uh, it's one of those things where I saw the name and I had to check what it was before I was sure if I knew what it was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, that's that Robert De Niro one. I think when someone was a sidekick or something, and it was a whole thing. It, so, whenever an actor is like, I want to do a movie that's not really that good, they call <laughs> it this guy. I guess, I guess. <laughs> and if you he's want to do a... on someone, he's he's getting good people. <laughs> And if you want to do the movie that's just a complete turd, you call it a ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what you do. Not anymore, though, because he's not got those tax write-offs, so he's, he's stopped making movies, unfortunately. Well, or fortunately, oh. depending on your perspective. <laughs> you have okay. a ball, friend of the podcast. Welcome anytime. What have you just said, Tim? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Pete, this guy will beat us up. We have to be nice to him. Oh, dear. Anyway, uh... <laughs> I mean, I guess that wraps up the movie. There's not much more to add uh, with it. Uh, there's oh, there's some potential scenes. Like, I, I feel like the uh, the music teacher, there's a scene where he takes uh, Kit out to the woods and he's like, listen oh, to yeah. nature. It's a symphony. Mm-hmm. The the war, the birds, the, the trees. He's like, it's a symphony. I'm like, oh, shut up, you pretentious douchebag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, you know, maybe not the best thing in the world to have the young male teacher take out one single student into the middle of the woods I'll, I'll be where honest, it was she forgets what happened. It was weirding me out how often the teachers were left alone one-on-one with a student. I feel yeah. like that that very rarely happened in school. And if I ever did, oh, yeah. it tended to be, I'll oh, come with, you know, the teacher would say, come with me to the, the cupboard. If you to help, want to live. To help. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, let's, say, let's say they had to get some, like a like the TV mm-hmm. out of the cupboard. They'd get, they'd get a student to come with them to, yeah. you know, do, 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 the, do the lifting or whatever, but like you know but it's just those this i feel like this was a lot of intimate like like and that's to say it doesn't happen of course if you have like music lessons it might be just you and the music teacher like that's a possibility yeah. but sure. uh although in my school it tended to be in pairs you tended to go in pairs to the, the music lesson yeah and then uh yeah and we didn't even and it's not even really worth mentioning oh, but God. like the, the, mentioned, the... speak to your heart's content tim what about down oh, no. in the dark hall or whatever this movie's <laughs> called do you want to get off your chest? Oh no! I just feel like we pretty much like skipped over the whole thing where the bully gets she, like they find out that she knows their deal and then they chain her to the wall and I guess she gets possessed by like every ghost and becomes oh, yeah. like a zombie. This is weird. I forgot about this. And then she it was super and, forgettable. Yeah. And then Kit just kind of like you know takes her out of the room and snaps her out of it. Mm-hmm. Just kind of slaps her and be like, yeah, hey, wake up! You can fight this, Veronica. Yeah. I think one of the things that I thought more interesting, what that was more interesting that I wanted to see more of, is a uh, again, you know, we're mostly with Kit and the bully here, who like, which I think the bully's name was Vanessa and, uh, or uh, Veronica. Veronica, yes, Veronica. Veronica. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like, you know, they're not really that interesting because they're they're kind of like just normal throughout the whole thing. I like I I like the scene where she goes to the, you know, one that's like. Uh, become like the mathematics genius and yeah you know she has like all the drawings over a wall and she's trying to get her to like leave and she's like come on like we gotta go she's like no i gotta figure this out and she's like the answer is three and she's like huh like i was like <laughs> okay like like this is more interesting like i want to see her interacting with these people that have just like gone like you know full crazy and like see you know how she would you know try to snap them out of it or, or interact with them or something but all, all that kind of stuff is just you know they, they barely even touch upon it yeah, like, like I say, use use the fact that they're getting these skills in the plot somehow, and instead they just kind of like act crazy, and then some of them commit suicide, and that's basically <laughs> your your shtick. That's your whole thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, disappointing, uh, mediocre. Well, <laughs> Not that I had high hopes for it, but you know. Oh yeah, and then uh, and then uh, the that lieutenant or whatever, uh, she eventually does get reunited with her son just right before she explodes. Yeah, so they're in like, the greenhouse and it just <laughs> bursts into flames. That, that that also kind of made me laugh. I'm not gonna lie, uh, but that's not what I was thinking of. There was definitely something earlier in the movie that made me laugh unintentionally. Hmm. It's gonna bug me that I can't remember it now. It's gonna bug me, but I'll just have yeah. to watch the whole thing again. Was it when she painted the middle finger to the teacher? <laughs> no, <laughs> no it, it was not that. No. Uh, oh, and the one thing that really annoyed me is there was like a, I think one of the first scenes when they're having like a painting class and she's going through like, you know, each student and kind of giving them like, you know, compliments and or saying you know what's wrong or whatever. Blah, yeah, blah, blah. I don't recall any compliments. I think it was this is not terrible. This is this is terrible. Yeah, this like, is... <laughs> yeah. But like it was so frustrating because they never actually showed the paintings, and I'm like, 
oh what could you not like afford like just some like dumb stock painting or just have them like paint for real but it was just like I don't know, very distracting to me that's like you can't comment on all this stuff and not show us what you're talking about yeah i think tom king's available to do some drawings for you if you want to get him on board <laughs> he does good work uh does. yeah i was like when he posts those like covers of him just a question uh, just to go on a slight tangent of comics here mm-hmm. tim did you have you read oh, the please. most recent issue of mr mr miracle uh no i, I think i read okay. the first uh mm, I think I only read like the first two and it, well, it's amazing, but I'm waiting for the trade. That's fair enough. The reason why I bring it up is because there's a page in it that's meant to be drawn by a child and it's drawn by Tom <laughs> King. Like oh, that really? page, yeah. Because we got to that page on the, the comics podcast and we're like, this is just Tom King's art, isn't it? He he gave Mitch Jarvis like a paid job. He's like, I'll do that page, Mitch. Don't you worry. <laughs> that's awesome like i love uh like sometimes on twitter he'll post photos of like uh he'll sign someone's like you know batman book or whatever and yeah. he'll like draw on it and it'll just be like a really funny crappy drawing right next to like some beautiful artwork by like lee weeks or something yeah because there, there was a lot of jokes on twitter about um like some like writers or so, even some artists like being like they say oh do you want me to doodle something on the, when they're getting something mm-hmm. signed and they'll say oh no 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 uh, and yeah. kind of insulting that feels that like they don't want your, your oh, yeah. art like for free on their on their thing um mm. and tom king said they don't get my signature if i can't draw something on it <laughs> <laughs> I, I love when they do like a, a little quick like even if it's just a quick thing like that i i once uh had an issue of ff uh, i was getting signed by matt fraction uh and it was like one of those blank uh covers uh, I don't know why I had like a couple of those that I was like, oh, maybe someday I'll get an artist to sign these. But uh, I, I had him sign it and he was like, do you want me to draw a whale? And I was like, <laughs> okay. And he just drew like this big whale that takes up like the whole page. Like it's it's just like basically like a square with like a little fin and like a water spout coming out. But I was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like the idea that he just kept thinking of random things to draw on, <laughs> on these blank covers. <laughs> Uh, Joe, it took me ages to realize what those blank, co- you know, cover variants were for. Mm. I was like, why is there blank variants? And I'm like, oh, it's for cons, so people can get stuff drawn on them. Okay, yeah. I get it. I, man, I, I don't know how people do it. Like, I bought a couple of those, and then I had this idea I was gonna get like some really awesome like sketches and stuff. But I get so nervous when I meet people because they're always like busy and they're already sketching something, and there's a big line, and I'm like, I don't want to be the dude that takes up everyone's time and all this stuff, and then. So I was like checking out. I've gotten like a few sketches here and there, which is nice. But yeah, no problem taking up so much of my time, though. <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> Good. You you spent like five minutes like <laughs> working on the font placement today of like where you want the captions and stuff. How dare you? Shut up! <laughs> don't don't take them behind the scenes, behind the curtain of the show. <laughs> God damn it, Timmy! All right, I guess we should rate this movie out of ten, then, should we? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, it, it's a little difficult because again, like I don't, you know, don't want to go super low, but there's also not like that much I enjoyed that can go super high. Um, I, at first I was thinking like a four, but the more we talked about, it, I was like, yeah, this and that, and I don't know. So I think I'm gonna go slightly lower and give it a three point five. Oh my, okay, I'll actually <laughs> go with a four. I, I think four's fair for this. I think. Yeah. It's not a good movie, uh, but it's not criminally bad either. And it's not... That's true. Um, now, the, 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 the dull part of that is that it's not... Like, I was, like, there was a couple of unintentional laughs that I had, but it wasn't funny bad either. Like I wasn't laughing constantly because yeah. it was so stupid or so silly. Or... I, if it was like less generic and more crazy over the top, then I, I probably would have enjoyed it more and then yeah, could have bumped yeah. it up. But un- unfortunately, yeah, just all that bland same old stuff you've seen before it's it doesn't really do anything for you yeah no pretty much so um that takes us on to the portion of the show where we'll promote things to you and yes i just did a fancy thing where i brought up some <laughs> some things on the screen uh which obviously you can't see if listen to the audio version that's okay we're about to tell you what they are uh so we actually have a dedicated screams after midnight twitter now that you can go and follow mm-hmm. it's called at screams midnight um i did try at midnight streams but that was taken the filthy bastards whoever took that uh, not happy. So it's called At Screams Midnight. Uh, the full title does not fit for the record uh, in, the, in the tag. So At Screams Midnight. Uh, so get us on there. Of course, if you want to support the show, you can go over to patreon.com slash TV. And if you do that, you can um, you can get uh, voting rights once per month. In fact, it's worth mentioning that when the vote goes up for September, there'll be three votes because 
because it's October where you're voting for. You get some extra votes. One of them's even going to be public. Two will be for patrons only. Mm-hmm. And it'll be a whole big thing. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, also, speaking of October and October thought, uh, I, I would like to announce something on this episode. Oh. Yeah, something me and Tim were talking about uh, just yesterday that we decided what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> so we uh, last year we did our top 100 horror films uh, a countdown mm-hmm. in four parts, four 25 chunk parts. Uh, this year we are going to do a top 50 um, of the 1980s. We're going to do top 50 horror films in the 1980s. It'll be in two parts. That'll be part of the October thon. So you can look mm-hmm. forward to that. We'll be working on that soon uh, for October. So yeah, have, have fun with that. Um, so yeah, go to patreon.com, get some bonuses. Feel warm and fuzzy on the inside because you're supporting the show and everything we do. If you can't do that, don't feel too bad. You can, of course, watch the ads on YouTube. Turn your ad block off. It does help. Uh, like and subscribe. All the usual stuff. All of it does help. So thank you very much uh, once again for, for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, guys. And we'll see you next time.